Welcome all to Off the Cuff. Uh, hope you all are having a wonderful weekend. And I want to start with a quote today. A healthy relationship is one in which love enriches you, not Im imprisons you. And I'm talking about this today because we do have uh, a wonderful guest. Uh, and I'll be talking about uh, healthy, long-term safe uh, relationships uh, with her because she is the founder of and we met promoting healthy wholesome romantic relationship for singles over 30 and above yes uh, so shalini welcome to off the cuff thank you so much uh, for having me namrata i'm looking forward to our discussion i am looking forward because a lot has changed you know as far as relationships go right so you know, uh, we are uh, past the generation that, uh, you know, believed in kuch kuch hota hai, tum nahi samjoge, <laughs> you know. So how has the definition of romantic relations changed in today's time? Because I think people are finding it tougher and tougher uh, to get into a long term relationship or, a, or finding someone special. Um. You know, a great question. Uh, what you're asking is that, you know, how is the landscape changed or why are people finding it? Uh, you know, why are people saying it's difficult to find someone special, right? But uh, before that, I think kuch kuch hota hai will continue to stay okay. because it's love, okay. it's romance, and okay. that's here to stay. Okay. I mean, if that's not there, then, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's the starting so... point. <laughs> Correct. Absolutely. It has to start with, you know, there is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, but, uh, you know, coming to your point of why dating seems tough, um, in my view, I think there are three reasons for that. Um, so the first reason what I say is, uh, the cultural expectations, the societal pressure, and the traditional values is making it kind of difficult to find a compatible partner. Uh, you know, the single Indians, they're finding themselves grappling with like a dilemma as they challenge the long-term uh, societal, long-standing societal expectations surrounding dating, which are, you know, upheld or built by family and parents. Mm -hmm. So, um, for example, you know, I'm just saying that, for example, lack of acceptance of alternatives such as uh, cohabitation or domestic partnership with the uh, marriage being the sole recognized form of a long term relationship yeah. or to be, you know, under be under pressure to be married by a certain age or, you know, follow the expectations or the practice where uh, the man needs to be taller, he needs to be the breadwinner, the woman needs to have a certain body type, have a certain, you know, have lighter skin complexion, and, you know, have her role, her role still remains to manage a home. So, you know, so like, that's the first point, I think, you know, because people are grappling with that, that what is right and what's wrong. Hmm. Second, what I feel, um, our folks are, you know, struggling to allocate sufficient time and energy to the dating process because of our, you know, fast-paced, uh, you know, nature of modern life yeah. and demands of our careers. Hmm. So I think because dating does require uh, investment of time. Hmm. Now, those who are actually investing, um, they are, uh, it's challenging, they they, it's, it's coming across to be challenging because there is an expectation for immediate um, results. Mm. So they're looking for instant spark or, you know, immediate chemistry. Mm. While this does occur occasionally, mm. it is a rare phenomenon. Yeah. And uh, for those investing time in dating, mm. you know, we highly recommend you know, approach your first few interactions with zero expectations mm -hmm. and, you know, a, a zero expectations of it turning into something, right? Mm -hmm. And focus on, and what we would say here is, you know, meet, meet the person, gauge whether there is similar vibe and like-mindedness for you to even take it ahead. So I think these are the three reasons where, um, you know, dating seems to be uh, seen as a very tough project. 
Right? Or finding someone compatible is a tough project. Yeah, and you, uh, you know, hit, hit on some valid points. I do believe, you know, so much of uh, change is going on. And for the young people, uh, you know, it is getting a little confusing. And especially with the online dating coming up now, your traditional uh, values coming into play and everything else, it's not uh, easy to balance everything. And like you're saying, always meet up and then see, because sometimes, you know, things on paper look good. And when <laughs> you meet a person. Oh, and also, so like, for example, I'll give you an example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but before I give you the example, you know, you said young people. So when we say the word young, we keep them only in their 20s. So let's just say for single people, right? Yeah. So, so I'll give you an example. Um, um, you know, um, there was this, uh, you know, uh, uh, this lady who met this uh, gentleman and she mm -hmm. found everything going great. Um, you know, whatever, whatever were her criteria in terms of the way he looks, um, his professional life, his sense of humor, everything was mm -hmm. picking the box for her. But uh, the, he, he ate with his mouth open. Okay. Right. And she, so that put her off in the first interaction. Okay. And she, so she said, you know what? Uh, great guy, everything, but he ate with his mouth open. Mm -hmm. So, and she says, what do I do? Okay. So we were talking and she said, what do I do? Because, you know, how do I find someone? So I told her, I said, why don't you tell him? Because if everything is working for you, yeah. what? so she says, how do I tell him? Because it will sound rude. So I said, I agree. Bec and then I said, why don't you play a game with him saying, you know, we've met and like, you know, um, but, you know, what is it that about me that bothers you are the things? And then you give him your feedback. And let's see if it registers because it's possible it that nobody has ever told him okay mm -hmm. to eat you know with your mouth closed or chew with your mouth closed wow. mm -hmm. and it can be a pet peeve for someone yes. so what I am saying over here is uh, there are pet peeves and they're deal breakers mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so there's a thin line between them very true very true so when you know like, yeah yeah so so we're not giving chance to someone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Like we are in that first meeting or few meetings, we are saying, mm, I like this person, but this is putting me off. Completely putting me off. So discuss it. And so we are so scared to communicate. Right. And, you know, and so then you're, ti uh, you're tired. Mm -hmm. And then you come back on and we met or any other app. And then again, you're seeing and you're like, oh, why can't I find someone? Right, true. So, yeah. yeah. So tell me, why uh, did you launch this uh, site? And we met, uh, What what's the vision and mission behind it? And, uh, you know, and like you're saying that you are generally dealing with uh, everybody, not just like young people like in the 20s, but 30, and, 30 onwards could be, you know, single parents looking for companionship or, or anybody. So it's open for everybody. A little bit about and we met, that'd be lovely. Yeah. I will talk about and we met, but I'll define young people once. Young <laughs> is as long as you're young in your head and your heart. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. So you could be young in your 30s. You could be young in your 40s. Okay. Uh, you know, so uh, and coming to the rational uh, behind uh, launching or building and we met uh, okay. it stems from several key factors or let me say three key factors here. Um, one is um our culture, okay, where there is pressure to marry early, all right? So in the Indian society, we know that there is a prevalent expectations for individuals to marry in their 20s, right? Yes. However, you know, this leaves those who choose not to marry or are unable to find a partner in their 20s marginalized in the marriage market, Yes, particularly women. Yes. So we at And We Met aim to normalize the idea that people can enter into a relationship at any age, whether they're in their 30s or 40s or beyond. So this could be their first time. Mm -hmm. This could be their second time or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why we're building And We Met. Mm -hmm. The second one, what we are doing is, is we are offering options beyond traditional marriage. Hmm. Right. While marriage 
remains and will remain a popular choice for long-term relationship. There is a growing segment of single Indians seeking committed relationships, okay. all right, without the formal institute of marriage. And we as a platform or a service provide for individuals to basically explore these different relationship structures, including domestic partnership or companionship, catering to, you know, diverse relationship preferences to individuals, allowing them to meet folks with similar relationship intent. Mm -hmm. And the third thing which uh, we are talking about or tackling is the issue of fake profile. Yes. Um, the online dating industry is actually plagued by fake profiles, especially on the Indian sites. I mean, there are media reports that say anything between 40 to 60 percent you know each platform has fake profile mm. so um and this is you know a significant percentage of users they misrepresent their uh, their gender their age mm. their photographs or even relationship status okay. while we acknowledge that eliminating fake profiles entirely is still challenging what we have done is we've implemented rigorous checks and balances to minimize their prevalence, fostering like kind of a more authentic and a trustworthy, hopefully dating environment. Mm -hmm. So basically, overall, you know, we are providing uh, or we are focusing on authenticity and flexibility in uh, relationship choices. Which is very important in today's uh, times, because like, as you're saying, there's so many, uh, you know, portals now. Uh, you know, uh, catering to South Asian Indians or even otherwise uh, having so many um, fake profiles on it. So uh, all the uh, the people just need to go to andwemet.com and, uh, you know, make an account. How does, if people need yes. to, uh, yeah, how do they join? Yes. So we are, uh, we are in the process of uh, launching a version two of what we are building. We are in the process of launching an app. But currently, we are on the web. Mm. Uh, we can be, uh, you know, uh, you can sign up on any of your devices. You go on to andbemet.com and, uh, yeah, and you do the needful. And we also we also provide, uh, we also do actually, um, you know, if I may say so, do uh, meetups. Okay. They're, they're online meetups. So Ooh. these meetups are more to just meet similar like-minded people um it's 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 uh, we play there it's around activities where we also so we have a software where we also give them chance to have a one-on-one -on -one interaction so we we but everything is online and we keep hosting those as well so one is you go on to and we met the the service the platform and one is participate in our meetups Okay, so do and both. do you do you pair them in certain ways, knowing okay, reading their profile, or do they pick? How does that work? Like you know, I know swipe left and right is on. I don't know Tinder. I've never used any of that, so I don't. Know. How does your portal work? So we're not providing personalized service yet because for personalized service you really need to understand what an individual wants, okay. and then kind of give them similar profiles which may work for them or may not work for them, okay. right? You know, so Namrata, we are, or, you know, I think matchmaking is, is a, each individual is, has a personal a person. choice. Yes. Right? So, mm -hmm. so we, at some point, we hope to cater to each individual. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, because what you may like or want, I may want something else. Okay. You know, so like now, let, let, let's just say, let's say even if we had 10 people, mm -hmm. right? All 10 will want something different, Yes. right? The yes. basic thing of honesty, trust, that is the foundation of any long-term relationship. And we hope that people have that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But then what I am looking for, what attracts me in a person, mm -hmm. I'm okay with someone who is maybe married before. I'm okay with somebody who's a single parent, or I am not okay with someone who's been married before you know someone says okay i'd like somebody who's taller okay. Okay. you know so all so what we do in our online we get like-minded people okay. so we have like let's say we'll have maybe 
Uh, it's a very small group about uh, bit anything between 10 to 14 people with equal number of men and women in a kind of a similar age bracket and in a similar kind of education background. Okay, so you, okay, so, I will get that. And then what we do is like, you know, over 90 minutes, uh, we have, uh, we play games, uh, you know, they get to, we put them on, at ease, they get to know each other, it's all online. Oh. And then we get all, all of them to meet each one. Hmm. So they, they meet everyone. Okay. And then they decide <laughs> if they want to take it ahead or not. Yeah, this sounds pretty comprehensive to me and nothing is forced upon them or, you know, it's uh, so which is a good thing, I'll say. And you're comfortable, you are, I think, you know, you're yeah. in your own safe environment. You're not making an effort to drive somewhere. So I think you're that's, not... that's making your portal, uh, you know, different from other uh, other sites. Yeah, we just say. like take it easy. Yeah. You don't even have to, you know, because there is a pressure of dressing up, yeah. looking good, you know, because everybody is seeking validation of sorts right yeah, so there is no like, pressure absolutely and you're dealing with you know generally singles over 20 uh, 30 and above so they are already they've you know formed a certain uh, you know uh, whatever in there and they're much more mature uh, to deal with whatever comes uh, uh, there we hope so <laughs> and what they uh, what they need yeah i mean relationships uh, and evolve so nobody knows what's going to happen but if they Absolutely. can, you know, a person can evolve and the other uh, does not. So you have to deal with that also. Um, that's Yeah, that's once you're in a relationship. Yeah. So our job is, where our job right now is, is just to introduce you yeah. to somebody like-minded. Yes. And then and then we hope you take it ahead. Okay. Yes. So okay. yeah. Got that, yeah, got that point. point. So now my next question, like I was reading a, a statistic and it said that only about 20% of Indian Americans have a spouse or a partner that is, you know, uh, not of Indian origin. So that's, that's, uh, I can see that a lot, uh, especially with uh, Indian um, um, young adults yeah. who are uh, trying to settle down. Uh, what do you have to say about that? You know, we put our kids or, you know, uh, in a melting pot, we come here to through the US or two. And then we say, when it comes to settling down, you better pick somebody of your own, you know, culture. Uh, any thoughts on that? Uh, my thought is, again, it's an individual choice. Okay. Right. But here the parental Once... pressure comes into play. Correct. Yeah, so correct. Then... Why? Yeah, because... Uh... Again, let's go back to societal expectations uh, for Indians. Mm -hmm. uh, Indians living uh, anywhere in the world, okay? We are all seeking validation from our parents and family at every given point of time, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, from doing well in school, yes, okay? Uh, getting through a good college. A good college is as desired by the parents, mm -hmm. right? Uh, getting a professional degree which the parents think is like let's say if I want to be an opera singer as an Indian okay it's not considered as a professional degree like you know oh my god how can you be a singer right you need to be a doctor or an engineer or maybe even a teacher or you know something you know be an artist be a painter but you can't like, I'm just saying you know they have that's categorized just a hobby <laughs> Correct. that's a hobby right so I am saying somewhere we are seeking validation, right? And and to your question, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think families and parents should allow, allow their children to make their choices and validate it for them that, hey, we are there for you. That's all they need, Basically. right? Mm -hmm. There is no, and, and like you talked about, you know, 20% uh, Indian Americans marrying outside their culture. Now, let's take India itself. Forget um, marrying out of the culture, which means that you're marrying someone who's Caucasian. Or yes, yeah. In India itself, now let's just look at it. We have somebody who's a Punjabi. Yeah. Okay. If they uh, go and they are with a Tamilian, that itself is an issue. Very true. Hmm. Okay. So, what well, I mean, I think. You know, today, longevity of relationship is itself questioned. Mm. So what 
what I say is let people be happy and let them, we all make mistakes. It's mm. okay to make mistakes. And you know, when you make mistakes, you can correct it, but in either way, either grow yourself as a person mm. or maybe move on and uh, heal yourself and look for another companion. You know, uh, the whole thing is, and like I keep talking about the whole thing is, and, you know, you started this conversation about it being a healthy relationship. Yes. So it's only you two who define the health of a re- the, the couple. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then if you don't get validation of uh, parents or family, it just doesn't sit well because somewhere between the couple, the issue always rises. Actually, do you know, um, one of the reasons for a breakup is not abuse. It's mm. about interference from friends and family. Wow. You know, so abuse is a given thing. Yeah. Abuse yeah, yeah, yeah. is a given thing. But, you know, it's uh, so the reasons for a breakup is, you know, interference from friends and family. Right. Not growing as 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 a couple. Right. Uh, lack of physical intimacy. Not you don't share the same, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, towards, you know, you don't you don't you miss uh, intellectual intimacy, physical intimacy. It's not shared. So these are the reasons, right? And then, of course, it turns into abuse because, you know, it can be abuse, could be physical or mental, and then the relationship just withers away. So there are a lot of factors, not just, I'll say, uh, you know, caste and religion or, or, uh, uh, you know, culture, uh, but that is important also in certain ways. And uh, it's also a very traditional way of thinking that we have to always, always, we always look for validation from our parents. And it's a big burden to carry if you go against their wishes. And many, think- many a time, uh, young people uh, do so. Like, you, you, again, the thing comes, you, your relationships can only be as healthy as you are. If you even please the parents and then you're miserable in some with some other person, then I don't know how how it's going to uh, move along. So whatever you're looking for something to... long term, you're looking yes. for something if substantial. You're... Yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. To wo wo baat ho gaya. you accommodate a lot of our relationships, are, you know, older times are based on that. <laughs> say. But, but, but yeah, but I think adjustment is there or accommodating is there happens. even if you know, even if you know each other. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I mean, any friendship or any relationship requires accommodation absolutely right like you, it's you, right which we, fit yeah yes all the time. so yeah but but coming back to this i think uh, you know i think if there are people who prefer to to find someone outside their their culture it's absolutely fine uh, i think it's yes. the value system because yes. all cultures are great yeah. and i think uh, and also let's let's accept that when some when two people come together it's not just the individuals it's the families that come together yeah so and if I there is validation you, you and from, accept- absolutely and you learn so much more from different tradition and different culture and uh, you know like even in india or uh, you know, people living here, uh, you know, it only enriches you, I'll say. And rest, you know, the relationship on the is on the young individuals who are in it. But as far yeah, I mean, I think yeah, this, culture should come. Yeah, yes. it's up to the two of them. If who they're making them? it work, who are you and I? So, uh, Shalini, this was w- a wonderful discussion. I have so much more to ask you, but I think we'll have to do a part two another time where we can basically touch upon how we can save relationships, how we can better relation. This was more about getting in touch with people and knowing, and especially, you know, relationship in today's society have changed uh, because of 24-7 uh, so, uh, communication online too. Yes. And that is also driving the relationships uh, crazy <laughs> or maybe uh, bettering them or also kind of... Uh, no, there are ways, person. yeah. We talk about how you should... Well, you know, I think, like you said, we can talk again huh. uh, so that we don't have even in dating exhaustion. You shouldn't get exhaustion Absolutely. and how to how to cope with that and how yeah. to maneuver your or navigate uh, okay. to avoid dating exhaustion. I Yeah, because this I see so much because you're always connected 24 seven. You have to, you know, answer the text of your special one or, you know, so there is no space left sometimes I feel. And I think there's so much to talk on this. And uh, but this itself was 
I think a lovely, lovely discussion we had. Shalini, thank you for coming on Off the Cuff. And I think definitely we'll uh, uh, do it another time. Uh, and hopelessness, you got something out of this also. So uh, I guess like Shalini said, kuch kuch hota hai, tum nahi samjoge. Wo hamesha rahega. Because that's the start of a lot of things. So have a great uh, weekend. Thank you, Shalini. Thank you so much. Take care. Shosha is a creative Indian restaurant located in the heart of Silicon Valley. Shosha is a woman-owned business that serves traditional Indian flavors assimilated with molecular gastronomy techniques. The best Indian bar with happy hours in the Bay Area serves handcrafted drinks inspired by flavors from India with modern craft cocktails that are presented in unique ways. Shosha is a modern take on traditional Indian cuisine. We specialize in corporate luncheon, anniversary celebrations, birthday parties, and catering. Do check us out for a memorable modern Indian dining experience. Shosha is located at 141 South Murphy Avenue in Sunnyvale, California. <laughs>